Well, let's dive right into today's update. I have a few other items I want to tack on to the end of our time together, y'all. So let's hop to it. Listen, if you're new passing through, thanks for joining us. Check the description box. It will explain all of your questions, like why you don't actually see me. You only hear my voice. Again, this is done to mimic radio. So you can put your device down or you can just continue multitasking as you have me going in the background. So I will only be coming with uh, to you guys with what I believe are the most important updates, because as you know, when it comes to these breaking stories, there are always little minute updates here and there. But I only want to focus on the biggest ones. And this right here is big because on social media, you now have everyday folk like me and you and celebrities who were outraged by the video that they saw today happening on an intercontinental hotel property, okay? They are now calling for the complete and utter boycott or cancellation of all IHG resorts and hotels. Let's go into the finer details. For those of you listening outside the U.S., maybe you don't know, but IHG stands for Intercontinental Hotel Group. This company is a British-owned company, In their portfolio, they have 19 different hotel brands, which I'm going to call them all off for you. And those 19 hotel brands make up 6,000 properties in 100 countries, the U.S. being one of those 100 countries, okay? And so what people are saying is that, listen, you mean to tell me, now I'm I'm paraphrasing what they said, you mean to tell me that at this luxury hotel where a supposedly security staff are supposed to be manning the hotel video footage at all times that no one call the police and people are in outrage because this was a crime that we were witnessing. It was a crime. It was a physical assault right there in front of cameras that where people were supposed to be watching the footage. But let me take a pause there and let's go back to November. Okay. And I'll further explain why people are saying this hotel chain needs to be held accountable. Okay. And now the hotel chain has come out and made a statement too, by the way. So we'll get to all of that. So back in November, when Cassie filed her civil lawsuit against Sean P. Diddy Combs, she listed off several incidents of violence. This was just one. I think all of us agree that reading about something violent is very different than seeing it with your eyes. You have so many folks, regular folks and celebrities alike, saying that they could barely watch the video today because it triggered them. Some said it triggered up their own violent past uh, as an abuser or as someone who was abused. And then some people said it reminded them so much of childhood. They just couldn't even finish the video because we all agree it was horrible to see this man kicking this woman, dragging her, throwing a glass vase at what looked to be her head. But at any rate, in her documents, one of the things Cassie said about this particular incident is that Sean paid off the hotel management. Well, let me correct myself. She said hotel staff. So we assumed that was the management, but he paid them $50,000 to give him the video footage. And they did. That is a point of outrage because all of us agree. In particular, these people are saying as soon as whoever was manning those videos, that, that, that video footage or that video stream saw that crime, they should have immediately either picked up the phone and called the police to that hotel or the security who were on staff, they should have gone up to that floor and handled business and arrested him because he committed a crime on their property. But instead they bartered with him because he was who he was. I think we all understand that if it would have been me and you, we would have been in handcuffs a few minutes after someone saw it. Okay. So in her lawsuit, like I said, she detailed this. So people today were like, no wonder this was in 2016. And here we are in 2024 and no one has ever seen this video. And all this time, the people who worked at that hotel, the IHG staff, maybe people are saying the company owners themselves were aware of this incident and yet they kept it under under wraps in essence supporting abuse people are calling for good corporate citizens and uh, you can just look at it online people are saying all kinds of things about this but mainly this hotel chain needs to be held accountable now i want to put play devil's advocate i want to push back on this just a little bit okay there are several things here that i see that i think are very important first of all 
Um, IHG have come out, they've come out with a statement, y'all, and they've said, listen, this particular hotel is not under our management anymore. We don't have anything to do with it, right? So they're trying to distance themselves from the crime that took place at this hotel. They don't want to have anything to do with it because they understand it means cancellation for you. All right. However, I think what people need to keep in mind is that there is a difference between local hotel management versus hotel owners. And you can't really technically hold hotel ownership responsible for what local management did or did not do. Not to mention at the time of this recording, the information has not been revealed as to whether that hotel was owned, you know, uh, owned by an individual. You know, a lot of this kind of franchise type thing, like, you know, uh, as I go through the 19 brands, you're going to be familiar with a lot of them. I know we say it several of these brands. When I was looking at the list, I was like, my goodness. Right. Um, but um, some of these hotels are owned by individuals is my point. And in such a case, can you then hold uh, the hotel ownership responsible for what a local uh, hotel owner of that particular brand or who's in their, uh, you know, program or whatever franchise program, can we really hold them responsible? Some people are saying it doesn't matter. The bottom line is there's no way people are saying that the big folks didn't know about this. Well, guys, I don't know. I mean, I guess because a lot of us have worked in corporate, it's very, very often and true and very possible that the people in charge will have no idea what people on the lower level are doing. It's almost akin to what happened with the Ellen DeGeneres show. Ellen was like the big, big, big person. And she allegedly wasn't really aware of how her lower staff members were treating or mistreating, we should say, some of those people, even co-workers. Uh, and which, uh, and then, you know, of course, she was ultimately held responsible. Okay. So people are in outrage. How could a corporate citizen uh, be involved in something like this and uh, be a part of the hush, hush of it all? So guys, that's something too. Now, I want to say this. I was telling you guys originally when I was saying this was, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago, maybe a few weeks ago, time is going by so fast. I can't remember that in my view, my opinion, ultimately, I wouldn't be surprised if Sean Combs decided to take his own life due to the pressure, the embarrassment, the stigma. I mean, I think all of us understand that that this video released today, Friday, uh, that was literally it for him, not just here in the States, outside of the country as well. Uh, one thing about social media, it cuts both ways. When you do something fabulous, everybody around the world will know about it. But when you do something, when you commit a crime, especially when you've made a statement on your social media saying, you know, that, you know, I deny this never happened. These are horrible accusations. People are lying on me. And now we've seen for ourselves that you did exactly what she said. And that's just what we could see in the hotel uh, uh, hallway. We don't know how you beat her butt when she got, when you drug, when you ultimately got her back into the hotel room where nobody could see. So the bottom line is it's over for him. There's no coming back from this. Maybe before this video was released, we could say, hey, go away for a little bit. You know how we all take a break. But now that we've seen you kick, drag her to the ground, uh, drag her around the corner. Uh, it looked to me he either punched or slapped her initially to get, you know, or that made her fall to the ground. We've seen, we've seen you throw something at her. She was already down. You just kept with it. We saw the violent, horrific monster you are. It's over. <laughs> and any business that even tries to entertain a conversation with Sean Combs about a business deal, we're going to all be done with them too. So the bottom line is this is now having ripple effects upon ripple effects, even to the IHG hotel and resorts. So you guys will have to drop down there in the comments. What do you guys think about this? Do you think that uh, people should call on the big, big folks? And, you know, again, this is a British owned company. Do you feel like that those people need to come out and make a public statement, you know, either saying, you know, we would take responsibility uh, that our hotel staff or our hotel partners did not handle this. Like, what do you think should happen in this situation? Because the bottom line is this was a crime that took place on their property. And I don't know if in 2016, they were managing it, the uh, IHG Resorts and 
hotels. I don't know if they were managing at that time, but they're saying now that we don't have any connection to it. Now, let me, before I let you go, let me actually roll, roll off to you these 19 brands because you will recognize probably some of your favorites. Okay. I will probably butcher some of these names. The 19 brands, let's run through them quickly. These are all owned by IHG Hotel and Resorts. They're, they don't have any other brands other than these 19. Atwell Suites, Avid Hotels, Candlewood Suites, Crown Plaza Hotels and Resorts, Even Hotels, Garner and IHG Hotel, Hotel, excuse me, Holiday Inn Club Vacations, Holiday Inn Express, Holiday Inn Hotels and Resorts, Hotel Indigo, Halux Hotels and Resorts, which is in China, uh, Iber Roster Beachfront Resorts, which is one of their exclusive properties, Intercontinental Hotels and Resorts, which was which is uh, categorized as a luxury property. Of course, that was uh, the brand that they were at uh, in that video. Kempton Hotel and Restaurants, Regent Hotels and Resorts, Sixth Senses Hotels, Resorts and Spas, Staybridge Suites, Vignette Collection and Voco Hotels. Those are the 19 brands owned by IHG Hotel and Resorts. And people are saying they're sending emails, y'all. They're saying they're calling. But again, I don't know if that's the right course of action because we need to first, I think, find out, or maybe one of the um, news outlets will, was this hotel under their uh, you know, leadership or in a part of their portfolio at the time? Uh, also, who were the management team on stu- on staff or on duty that day? Was this hotel uh, owned by an individual whom, uh, you know, okayed this process? You know, things like, I feel like we need to know those types of things first before we jump to let's cancel, let's call on them to make a statement, let's call on them to do something. But listen, th- the heat is rising on these folks and I can promise you probably somewhere on their social media later today or maybe tomorrow, there will probably be an even larger and longer statement that they've put up on their IHG hotel and resort social media totally and completely uh, making a strong statement that they have absolutely nothing to do with this. Or, you know, as I said earlier, maybe even apologizing for, you know, one of their hotel chains, et cetera, et cetera, you know, not handling this in the way that they should have, which was immediately call the police um, if the hotel, you know, security weren't available or what have you. But this basically should have, we should have, we should have then seen seen video eventually of them handcuffing his butt and dragging him off in his towel to the clink. Okay. So there you have it, guys. That's the current update. Boycott on this uh, hotel chain and resorts. It's crazy. You know, as the days continue on, guys, I will tell you that I am really concerned I am just really concerned that this could just really go in a very dark way. And I don't quite know why I feel that way. Maybe I'm still thinking of the the son's diss track. I don't know. I just know you don't want to, you know, when you're already in trouble, you don't want to stir up the devil. You don't want to stir up trouble, more trouble for yourself. Now, as I end, I told you I want to tack on a few things. This is something I want to tack on. I've also been seeing on social media people saying, boy, oh boy, I bet you Sean's mom is just so embarrassed. I bet she's so, so ashamed. People are saying, I bet you this shocked her. This is what I have to say to that. This didn't shock her. That is her son. She knows her son. She knows what he's capable of doing. This is not the first time that she is our first time seeing a video of this magnitude, but it's not her first time. One of the things I learned when I was in the work is that people always know. We always know. But unfortunately, for all kinds of reasons, we don't act on what we know. Uh, we just pretend that we don't know because it makes us feel better to just not acknowledge um, how we knew things were happening and we were silent. Um, if Sean Combs' mother um, would have gotten him help many years ago when he was under her um, under her authority, maybe he wouldn't have turned out to be such a horrible person. So those are my thoughts. That's the update. Leave your thoughts below and I'll talk to you on the next podcast.